I tell you what, Jack Skellington loves his dog, is depressed, loves everything spooky unless it comes to Christmas. This man is a whole mood. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, our movie in the middle is The Nightmare Before Christmas. The Nightmare Before Christmas is a story by Tim Burton and is directed by Henry Selleck and stars Chris Sarandon, Danny Elfman, Catherine O'Hara, and Ken Page. The story is kind of a modern take on how the Grinch stole Christmas and stars a skeleton, Jack Skellington, who is kind of a depressed person because he's tired of being the Pumpkin King, who he is praised by everybody in Halloween Town for being just the best scarer of all time. Oh, I'm feeling good today, Mikey. Yeah. Ah! But once he discovers Christmas and Christmas land, he's re-inspired and wants to take it over as his own. I used to not like this movie, actually. I just really didn't care for it. I just would look at it and be like, what in the heffalump is this? Now it is one of my absolute favorite, not even just Halloween movies, but just movies of all time. I don't know, I just something got to me and I love it. Firstly, the claymation just, it just deserves a lot of attention and praise because claymation in general just deserves a lot of recognition because wow, the patience you have to have for that. There are just so many things in this movie that I have absolutely no idea how they did it. You know, things with fire, things with spirits and ghosts. It's just amazing what they were able to do. And this was like, this was like 30 years ago. Oh God. But it's nuts how long it takes to do this. I think it took them about three years to do it. And I want to say it was like every week they worked on it was like three seconds or 20 seconds, something like that. It was an insane amount of work, but it's timeless now. Everybody loves it. And the claymation is just so awesome because especially Jack Skellington, they're just so expressive. You know, for the fact that he doesn't have eyes, it's really interesting that you can tell every emotion that he is feeling. I, I watched like one of those behind the scenes uh, things on how they made all these props and all these characters on Disney Plus actually. And they just have so many different heads for all of his emotions. But all of the creatures of Halloween Town are just really interesting. There's so many cool designs. They're very eerie and weird and creepy, but kind of endearing as well. Like you could call them endearing. Oogie Boogie is just one of the coolest villains, I think, with his little neon light up casino. Who decided that? Like, that's such a random, we're going to have a boogeyman who's in a neon light up casino, but it works. And I'm not joking. The beanbag that I have here in my house looks like Oogie Boogie. You think I'm joking? I'm not joking. It looks like a giant pear and the top comes to a point. Looks like Oogie Boogie. There's not bugs inside it though, I promise. And just the setting itself is just so weird and eerie and creepy, but for some reason you're like, I like it. Specifically the famous Spiral Mountain. I mean, that's probably one of the most iconic shots of all time, him walking up Spiral Mountain with the whole moon behind him. It's just, it's so cool. There's so many really interesting designs in this, and they all go to serve what I think is another great high of this movie, is the tone. Like I just mentioned, everything in this movie is very eerie because it is Halloween town. It is about skeletons and ghosts and, and monsters and all these things that are like, they're just, even for being monsters, the way that they're formed because of the claymation and the way that everything looks and it's very pale colors and it's very, you know, dark or, or gray, it just feels kind of morbid but like they're cheery about it. I don't know, there's something about it that's just kind of romantic. And I, and I say that not in like a romantic of like, ah, oh, here's some chocolates, Jack Skellington. I love you kind of way. I mean, there's that in this too. But like, there's just, like I said, something endearing about the entire Halloween town. The entire movie, all these characters, there's just something about them that you just like. And yet there's like this gothic feel to it at the same time, you know? Like, it's really like... If you ever had like a like a goth phase or like a weird I love spooky time hipster phase, this is your movie. Like if you ever shopped at Hot Topic, this is your movie. And another huge high that really serves that tone is the music. This is a musical 
And all of the songs are just really interesting because they're catchy. But they really shouldn't be, except for maybe, like, two of them. The other ones are, like, really, again, they feel morbid a little bit. One of them is called Jack's Lament. I mean, it's really, they feel like they should be sad, and some of them are. You know, so they feel heavy and sort of melancholy, but in the most beautiful way. Like, they've got really great instruments, like accordions, French horns, and trombones, and tubas. And I, I think a bassoon, too. Like, obviously, everybody loves This Is Halloween. The Oogie Boogie song is so much fun. It's really cool, like one of those fun villain songs. But I think it's some of the others that really add to this. That Like like Jack's Lament that I've already mentioned, it's just so sad, but it's so well done and very theatrical. Like, this definitely has been a stage musical, and, and it, rightly so. Especially the town meeting song. Right after he discovers Christmas Town, I, I love that one. I really slept on it for a while, but like I said, the accordion in the back, all these little cool, just rhythmic things that they have going on, all the little pipins from the characters about like, what is, you know, this sock stocking, what is this box a gift? He's just trying to explain these things to them, and it's so funny just because they can't wrap their heads around. This is just fun, and it's not supposed to be creepy. But of course, the most polarizing song for people is What's This? because that's the part of the movie that's very Christmassy, but you watch it at Halloween. So it's weird, because I'm like, I have it on my Halloween playlist, because it's in the movie that I watch at Halloween, but also, like, it's not a Halloween song. I don't... It doesn't feel Halloween. What, what do you guys think? When do you listen to What's This? Is that a Christmas song or a Halloween song? When do you watch Nightmare Before Christmas? Is it a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? I want to know your thoughts. And for all this music, I just have to give it up to Danny Elfman because he just wrote such beautiful music, very catchy. He also sings for Jack Skellington, whereas Chris Sarandon plays Jack Skellington's speaking voice. Danny Elfman sings, and he's just got such... I didn't even realize it at first. They went well together, you know, like the voices. But he's just got such, like, a, a range, and he's just got such emotion in his voice. It was... He's great. Jack Skellington is just, like, such a cool character, Really, any character that's named Jack just automatically happens to be cool, but he's just such a cool character because he's, like, the one who's looked up to, but then he, I don't know, he tries to be inventive, but he's scary, and I don't know, he's just so cool. So, I do have, like, middle elements to this, because they don't take away from the movie for me, like, at all, but they're just things that I've thought about that just don't quite make sense to me. There are just parts of this movie that do not really make a lot of sense when you really think about it, kind of like Aladdin. The main one for me is, at the beginning, they sing This Is Halloween, and that's like our introduction to this world, and then they go, congratulations on another successful Halloween. Did they, like, do something before this? Because they're acting like they've scared a bunch of people, but nothing's, they didn't do anything. They, they, taught, they, they were, like, singing at us, the audience, so maybe we're the people they were trying to scare and they had a successful Halloween, but it, I don't know, it just doesn't make really that much sense to me. You know, and then I thought, okay, well, they have humans in their world, right? Because, you know, Jack goes and gives them the gifts, but I didn't realize that he went into Christmas Town. So they don't really have people in their world as far as we know. So who are they scaring? And what makes a successful Halloween? Do they just put this show on for themselves? And then it takes Jack, like, an entire sleepwalk through the woods to find the trees that go to Christmas land and all of these other holiday lands. But then when he goes back there later on to give out all the gifts, they can hear like a transmission. How did they make that? How are they able to hear across worlds? And then when he like dies, they think he died. And then he like, is like, I'm going to go fix all this and go tackle Oogie Boogie and all this. He just finds a, a passageway like, like in freaking Clue, just right to Oogie Boogie's lair from Christmas town. Does that... Am I, is there something I'm not getting there? It's like a graveyard ex machina. And if there are kids in Christmas Town, because there is the whole Christmas Town itself, but then but then there's the actual city, why isn't there one in Halloween Town? Not like there really needs to be, but it's just interesting, you know? It is also possible that I have overthought this. So overall, The Nightmare Before Christmas is like an incredible movie because it's just so short and so to the point but there's so many good songs. The tone is just, it, it, it gives you that kind of heavy Halloween feel, but also like that light fun, yay, let's sing Halloween songs and get spooky. 
it's just like a perfect mix and on top of all of that you just have to give it up to all the claymation artists who took all that time to do all these little things and it's just such an interesting movie my mom pointed out there really had never been anything before this i think that had to do with like two holidays coming together so it was just it's just such a little inventive movie it can be for all ages it's so much fun it gives you that spooky feeling i love the nightmare before christmas i'm gonna give it a four out of four making it my next top shelf movie let me know in the comments below what you think of the nightmare before christmas is it your favorite halloween movie is it your favorite christmas movie because a lot of people are split i think it's mostly a halloween movie but for some people it's a christmas movie so let me know what you think and as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and Halloween right in the middle. I'll see you guys later.